Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Genevieve Catholic Church. We are grateful for your presence and participation at this Mass. We also want to extend a hand of welcome to those who are visiting with us from other parishes or from out of town. In order to respect the dignity and solemnity of today's celebration and to ensure a space for worship and prayer, please turn off or put into silent mode all electronic devices. Our second collection today will be for capital improvements. I would like to draw your attention to the following announcement. <coughs> the second annual Knights of Columbus Chili Cook-Off and Cornhole Tournament will be held on February 4th, 2023. We would like to invite you to consider either being a participant or being a sponsor. Knights will be outside at the end of Mass to provide details for this event. As we begin our celebration, please stand and join in singing our entrance hymn, number 359, Go Tell It on the Mountain, 359. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, I'd like to invite all of our kids to their garden up to second grade, especially those who have not done First Communion. Please come forward for the blessing. Good morning. Thank you all for coming here, for joining us in our celebration of Mass this morning. So as you can see with her today, we honor the wise men, the three kings, so to speak. So today we're going to learn about their lives and we're going to learn how they point us to Jesus Christ. So today let's pray that the Holy Spirit will inspire each one of you so that like the Magi, you too will be drawn to Christ today through his word. Okay? So let's say a prayer. Heavenly Father, pour out your blessing upon these little ones, these who are closest to your heart, Lord, these who you favor so much. May your Holy Spirit open their hearts, O Lord God, so that the word will be planted in them, growing into seeds of faith that will help them to know you more and to grow closer to you. So may that word, Lord, inspire them and encourage them today. Send forth your spirit upon them, Lord, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I'll see you all in a little bit. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow. For the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you, dromedaries from Midian and Ephah, all from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the spirits, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Jesus Christ through the gospel. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. With A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. To when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrive in Jerusalem, saying, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them, until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. So for most of you who are here for Mass during our last Christmas uh, weekend, um, you might recall I told you the story of how or what my role was in my family when, uh, when it comes to the Christmas season. It was my uh, rule, my, I was the one who was in charge of setting up the nativity scene in our home, so that's something that I always look forward to, which is to set up the nativity as Advent season comes. Now, one of the things I always notice about our nativity, and probably for most of the nativity scenes, is that there's only one of each kind of animal that's present there. One kind of sheep, one kind of cow, and one kind of camel. 
And I think I probably can recall as a little child asking the question, if there's only one camel, how did that one camel be able to fit three wise men traveling for almost or over a year from their own country to, to, to Bethlehem? So that's always been one thing I was wondering, how in the world could this one camel fit the three magi who are traveling to Bethlehem? And then of course, I remember that I came from the Philippines. And in the Philippines, we have this one type of public transportation called a motorcycle where there is this wooden plank attached to the back of it so that the driver can fit probably eight to ten passengers all at the same time in one a single ride. And so I could say that if we can do it, I'm pretty sure that those wise men were able to fit in one kind of camel. Of course, that's not true. And of course, we don't have to worry about that because for our feast today, uh, we are now being led not back to the cave which happened, which, in which the nativity happened, but now we're being led to a house in the town of Bethlehem. So today as we celebrate this uh, Feast of the Epiphany, it's bringing us back to a nativity scene, into the house in Bethlehem. And while the Feast of the Epiphany means God's revelation that He is the light that the world needs in this time of darkness, we can only fully appreciate what this light means and how to receive this light and the promises attached to this light if we're going to look into it through the lens of the Magi, if we're going to look into it through their own story. So it's good for us to look this morning into the lives of the Magi in order, for, in order for us to understand how to best receive the promises of the star. Because what the Magi will tell us is that in their encounter with this star, the baby Jesus, they too experience a completion of their journey. And I'm not just talking about an external or physical completion of a journey, but an internal completion, a, an internal journey that they have probably been doing for all of their lives. And so in order for us to be able to understand this properly and to be able to truly enter into this, there are three questions that we need to answer in our reflection today. The first is, who are the Magi? The second is, what led them to decide to travel to Bethlehem? And the third, what did they find when they came or when they arrived in Bethlehem? So who are the Magi? It was said that the Magi are a men who are part of a priestly group that exists in the country or in the nation of Persia, which is now modern-day Iran. And their main task as the Magi is to advise the king and to interpret dreams. But they're also astronomers because, as we've seen in our gospel today, they know how to read the stars and the movements of the planets. Now, probably like most Oriental religions, their own religion is also heavily influenced by philosophy. That is, by the search for truth and knowledge. And so we can imagine the Magi spending all of their time living in their religious life, trying to search for that truth for that, uh, for that um, knowledge that can give them the answer to what is truly the meaning of life, that can help them to find the fulfillment of their desires, and even to help them find their own salvation. And so at some point in their lifetime, these magi have heard of this rumor that a new king of the world will emerge from the land of Judea in Israel, and that this emergence of a new king will be marked by the appearance of a star. And so probably at some point when they were just doing about their job, they're doing about their work, they probably found a new star that have risen up in the, in the west side of their nation. And when they saw this star, because it was a star that's nothing like the kind of star that they've ever seen before, then they probably start to realize that this star might be the one that marks the emergence the arrival of this king. Now, of course, that knowledge is probably not enough to make them want to pack up their things and travel for over a year, for more than a year, into an unknown nation just to be able to see what the star leads to. So it brings us to our next question. So what led them to finally decide to take this perilous journey to go to Bethlehem? And I think the answer can be found in what the star did for each one of them. I think the star stirred up in, in each one of them an inner restlessness. Remember that they are 
people who continue to search for answers for the truth and for knowledge. And so what the star probably did to them is it evoked inside of them that hunger for that knowledge, that hunger for that answer, and maybe even that hunger for that salvation. And they probably felt that an encounter with this king in Judea will give them all the answers that they're looking for. And that, that, and, and that, that, that hope is what probably led them to pack up their things, to get on a journey to go to Bethlehem. And so what did they find when they arrived in Bethlehem? It was never described in the scriptures, but I think we can safely speculate that they were probably surprised to find out that the king is an infant, that the king is a baby boy. They probably were surprised to see that this rumored king of the world is all by himself with only his mother in that house. There were no servants, there were no courts to, to kind of attend to him. There were no armies surrounding the house. There were no weapons or tools to use, which would normally a king would use to conquer the world. But I think that God was very intentional about this. Because I think what God wants to show the world is that he's going to conquer the world, not from the outside, but from within. He's going to enter into the hearts of humanity in order to transform them from within and lead them to him through that inner transformation. And the Magi were the very first ones to experience this kind of kingdom, this kind of kingship. And they realized that they, if they truly want to get close to this truth, if they truly want to receive all the answers that they're looking for, they need to go to where Jesus is. And that means they need to be willing to kneel down before him. And what that kneeling means is that the Magi, who are embodied with royal dignity, who are the most important people in their own nation, must be willing to let go of all that they have and are in order to worship this baby king. That means they need to let go of the good things that they have, their possessions, and lay it before him. This means that they also need to strip themselves of anything that prevent them from being humble enough to kneel before the king. And that's what they did. And I recall there's this certain painting called The Visitation of the Magi, where the three of them were kneeling before this baby, and all their royal headdresses were on the floor. They stripped themselves of their royal cloaks as they were bowing before him, and their, uh, their faces were filled with joy as they behold this baby. So what does this mean for you and me today? I think like the Magi, all of us too are on a journey. Journey on a search for the answer to a lot of the questions in our lives. Journey on a desire to know what can, what can fulfill all the desires, all the longings in our hearts. And maybe on a journey to search for what will bring us salvation. And what Pope Benedict reminds us about the Magi is that the journey of the Magi represents humanity's moving towards Christ. That the journey of the Magi from their nation to Bethlehem represents man's inner aspirations, inner longing that can only find its answer in Christ and therefore must move towards Christ. And so what the Magi invites us to this morning is to learn from them that if we too desire the truth and knowledge that can give the answers to all our questions and longings, we also must be willing to kneel down before this infant king, this baby boy. This means we also must be willing to lay down before him all that we are and all that we have. The good things that we have, our gifts, our talents, our possessions, anything that we have that is good for us, we're invited to lay them before at the feet of this baby king so that through those he can use them to reveal his glory to us. But this also means we need to let go of anything that might prevent us from being humble enough to kneel before this baby. Maybe for some of us this might mean fear, letting go of the fear, the fear that I'm afraid of what the Lord might ask me to do or might say to me and I might not like it but I need to let go of that if I want to receive his blessing. It might mean letting go of pride and self-reliance to acknowledge that I truly need God in my life, 
that I cannot just do things on my own. Maybe it's letting go of the need for control, where instead of desiring to shape the story of the nativity according to what I want, I'm willing to let myself submit to what the Lord reveals before me. Or maybe it means letting go of my comfort zones, like the Magi did. Be willing to leave where I'm most comfortable in order to go where the Lord, where the star wants to lead me. So I think that that's what this feast is inviting us today into. To come before our Lord, to kneel before this baby, to come and adore him. So that just like the Magi, as we come to where Jesus is and encounter him there, then we can go truly to the place where like these wise men from the east, our journey will also be complete. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Lord of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Gathered here, we share a living tradition, a glorious promise, for the light of Christ continues to shine for all peoples. Let us pray for men and women of all languages, races, and cultures. For the Holy Catholic Church, that she may welcome all who seek peace and truth in her fold, let us pray to the Lord. For the nations in a world of darkness, that their leaders may be drawn to the dawning brightness of Jesus Christ, let us pray to the Lord. For a universal charity, that all bigotry, narrowness, and racism may be driven from our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. For a spirit of humble worship in our own lives, that we may adore Jesus in the Eucharist with the devotion of the Magi who brought gifts. Let us pray to the Lord. And for the souls of all the faithful departed, that eternal light may shine on them. Let us pray to the Lord. Almighty God and Father, your Son is light from light, your glowing sign to all nations. As we pray for the peoples of your world, help us to strengthen the bonds of unity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us in singing number 374, As with Gladness Men of Old, number 374.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your church, in which are offered now not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrifice and receive. Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis Arpo, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day, on which your only begotten Son, eternal with you in your glory, appeared in a human body, truly sharing our flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. We please, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said a blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and glorious ascension into heaven, of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar and heart, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace on our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those of you joining us on social media, Please pray with me an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please join us in singing number 373, We Three Kings, number 373.
Please join us in singing number 377, The First Noel, number 377. Let us pray. <clears throat> Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, pour out in kindness his blessing upon you and make your hearts firm in faith, hope, and charity. Amen. Amen. And since in all confidence you follow Christ, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in darkness, may God make you too a light for your brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. And so when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to him whom the Magi sought as they followed the star, and whom they found with great joy, the light from light, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Please join us in singing number 375. 
Lord, today. Number 375. Sue Isaac and Dallas. 